Hi, welcome to another five minute PGX Clinical Pearls. My name is Vanas Sarami. I'm the pharmacist and medical science liaison for Althea DX. Today I'm going to talk to you about MTHR gene. So, if we think about folic acid or folate that we ingest, fol the difference between the two is folate is naturally found in supplements and food versus folic acid is man made and you can take a supplement, which is why you see some. Uh, Pay, uh, patients who, some females who are pregnant actually take a folic supplement. And I'll explain here why I'll be a little more clear. So when we take a folate acid or folate, since they're inactive uh, supplements, it needs to be activated into usable form that the body can utilize. So it's converted into methyl tetrahydrofolate, and that gets combined with the B12 that's in the body and the homocysteine that's in the body, which we have a very small amount. And that turns into methionine and eventually SAMe, which is a product that we want. And that's the precursor for methylation. In another video, we talk about the importance of methylation in the body. But that is the precursor for methylation. So for this process to happen, we need uh, MTFHR that can work efficiently. So when we do a pharmacogenomics testing, we're more concerned about the variant that the um, the MTHFR variant homozygous. So if a patient is a homozygous for MTHFR, they are, they are still able to go through the cycle and do the conversion, but it's 60% reduced. So if you think about what that would mean is you'll have a buildup of homocysteine, which that can cause a lot of inflammation and a pregnancy complication. So if, if a female is in the childbearing age or years, we have them test uh, blood, do a blood test to figure out their homo homocysteine blood levels. And also, you would not uh, get an efficient amount of SAMI production at the end over here. So that can also include, that can also mean that that patient is more susceptible to depression. So depression and cardiovascular disease and pregnancy complication. So when we think about, if you look here, when we think about a case study, a 32-year-old female who has hypothyroidism and anxiety, she was put on the methyl tetrahydrofolate, 8,000 microgram in addition to B12. And she was heterozygous for the MTFHR gene. It means, again, she's still able to go through that conversion, but it's decreased by 30 to 40%. And so that means she's not able to... Um, she's not able to convert efficiently. And so this patient had anxiety, was put on uh, Xanax. And so it took from August, 2014, all the way to February, 2015 to get her mentally stable. And she was able to come off of her Xanax, use it very sparingly. And so what happened here, she, although she was put on the activated form of um, folic acid or folate, she was over methylated. So if you see it was a high dose. And so that got decreased to 500. Uh, microgram for either either of those two supplements and also added a SAMe, which is that end product in that cycle. And so th there is a balance of methylation. So you can be over methylated or under methylated. So finding out that right balance is also key to figuring out the right dose. So when we do a pharmacogenomics test, uh, when it comes to the MTFHR gene, it doesn't necessarily tell us what medication is the best to use for that patient in this scenario. It could mean that now we know why a patient is more prone to um, depression, cardiovascular disease, pregnancy complication. And in some cases, such as this person, this um, female case study here, a supplement could be all that that would need it to um, get that cycle going. And not for everybody, but that would be a case of why that would be uh, useful. Thank you for joining and tuning for next time when we talk about another gene.